Uh, viewers, as you know, have been asking us these past few weeks for our motive in airing the views of a masked L.A. policeman who was critical of abuses of authority inside the L.A. Police Department. In one word, we can sum it up, our reasons for this series, accountability. Law enforcement is not a private business, we think. We hire policemen to maintain law and order. They're accountable to us for their actions. And nowhere in the performance of duty is there a greater need for accountability than in those incidents where a policeman takes the life of an unarmed citizen. In the next five nights, our reporter Wayne Satz will review the serious questions which Eyewitness News has raised and will continue to raise until the Los Angeles Police Department provides answers and practices accountability. <laughs> The one and only Sharpshooter Spark these niggas, my nigga Yo, I speak to be heard The truth shall set you free Set the niggas free, God You in the chamber Yo, it's the sharpshooter One and only Guaranteed I ain't tripping, yo, it ain't no comparing me to nothing else Untraceable, like a stealth bomber on your radar There they are, take a look Yo, I spit the uncontainable Highly flammable, unexplainable Game pro, crisis, show you how to tame a hoe Show you how the game should go So you lames can know Black knights equals nothing but dough So what you working with? You bitch niggas ain't hurting shit Spitting commercial shit, we rhyme for different purposes I spit for the cars, you spit for the broads I spit for the streets, you spit for the geeks I spit for North Long Beach and all my peeps Holding it down, I spit for the meek We holding the crown, you savage niggas had your chance So now it's on us, and just us You get your bones crushed, you go against us Resist us, I think's not, think it's not. impossible yeah. if, you, if you live for the blood, throw your flag up If you got the love in your heart, throw your flag up Raleigh fingers on the back, some rolled the bag up Street had the pin in the pad, he threw a tag up Uncooked beef in the street, they tied the rag up Goldie got the clip in the closet and filled the gat up Bobby Sharp and the razor, oiled the bat up Let the dogs out the basement, pull the wrap up Some out of bound cats about to get clapped up Pussy high nigga off coke, trying to act up Against the world's greatest mind, Bob Digital might throw a shower and hand block or 52. My young son, big un, don't fuck with patty cake. Bound to walk through the woods barefoot, choke a rattlesnake. Rise brother Melchizedek, dissect it. Up in the project life, the streets be hectic. The gun burst, son shot his tongue first. Sitting inside his tongue first, he should have shot the gun first. And chew on the sunburst, bitch, it's Bobby's day. Flip exploder out, click, click, like shoddy spray. Tear through flesh bone, get lost up in your ass sheet Cause you came talking that same bullshit last week Fucking coke hat nigga, what, your brain numb? I used to wonder where these pussy clocks came from Up in the 36 cell block, I shadow box Ship on wheat grass and build up like a male ox If you love for the Glock, throw your flag up If you got love for the guards, throw your flag up If you live from the heart, throw your flag up don't cause the beef, I might tie the rag up All my dingy head niggas, roll a bag up And throw your flag up If you come from Long Beach, throw your flag up If you come from Compton, throw your rag up If you come from the West, then throw your hood up If you come from the block, then throw your flag up I spit the flavor for the ear, shit for the streets Rolling in the cutty about five niggas deep, one SK, two tech nines and two sticks ready to trip. On these fools around my way, popping shit like the black knights don't air them things out. Knuckle up in the spot till someone get dropped, stomp, get passed out, passed out off a pint of that ball, ready to mic brawl. Clean sweep, took the first pitch, knocked the home run. Black knights known to grab mics, leave the spots full blown. You know the model. The night to nothing, so stop fronting like you ain't heard this high pitch through your 12 inch Kenwood's Alpines. I keep your six by nine stumping, jumping, jumping like destiny. I laced it with the rugged recipe, you know my technique. On a raw beat, speak with the digi slur speech, but aggressive with the mic. All mine is strictly black night, still a spotlight. Show niggas how to rock mics the right way. Spit like a K, M O N K, the conqueror. Smash your sponsor, learn a lesson. From the Black Knight Lethal Silent Weapon
Jerry, I think, you know, to really understand these stories, you have to kind of imagine that the victim of the police killing was your husband, your wife, your child. And if that seems unlikely, you just please look at this case with us. The man killed was 37, not a criminal, not even a suspect, but a respectable building manager, married, the father of two kids, unarmed. You'll hear eyewitnesses backed up by the coroner say that the man was killed methodically by a police officer. And you won't hear from the LAPD. They are silent. Please just watch this story about Ruben Cortez, and you may understand why we must ask questions about the way he and others have died. It was a Wednesday back in January. Cortez was at the building he manages. A man with a rifle bursts in. He demands to see his ex-wife, finds she's not there, fires his gun, and takes Ruben Cortez as a hostage to make good his escape. Cortez is forced to drive the getaway car as the rifleman exchanges gunfire with the police cars, which are now in hot pursuit. The high-speed gun battle ends with the getaway car crashing in downtown L.A. Somehow, by the time investigators arrive, 37-year-old Ruben Cortez is a corpse. Police will later admit that all the bullets in his body are theirs. This is not the first, and I'm sure it is not going to be the last, in a running gun battle such as this, where, unfortunately, we have a hostage or an innocent person that sustained injury or uh, is fatally wounded by a police gunfire. That's how it looked at first, that Cortez had just gotten in the way of some of the LAPD's return fire during a frantic chase, an unfortunate but understandable killing. But eyewitnesses did not see it that way. Two witnesses told us that after Cortez cracked up the car he'd been forced to drive, a police officer walked up to the car and emptied his gun into it. One police officer going to the passenger side, yeah, shooting three times. No, I think the image is gone. About five, six, five. And that was it. You saw one officer come up to the passenger side of the car and shoot his gun. He emptied his gun. Cortez's body was autopsied, and County Coroner Thomas Noguchi told us that the evidence was perfectly consistent with what the witnesses had said, that Cortez was likely grazed by one bullet during the chase, knocking him unconscious and causing him to crash the car, but that the three police bullets which killed Ruben Cortez were apparently fired by a man standing beside the cracked-up car and firing his gun into the unconscious body of Mr. Cortez. The department's investigator, Lieutenant Charles Higby, later admitted to us that an officer did walk over and fire at the getaway car. But he wouldn't and won't comment on whether those shots killed Cortez. He wouldn't and won't say who the officer was. He wouldn't and won't share his findings with the public. His investigation is secret, not the public's business. And Higby's shooting team, four months after police bullets killed Ruben Cortez, was still not through figuring out what happened. And therefore, the district attorney, who's supposed to make sure the police department honestly investigates itself, had not even begun looking at evidence or talking to witnesses. Cortez was but one of several unarmed civilians killed by the LAPD in recent months. O.C. Newfield, 81, an innocent hostage, details withheld. Steve Jackson, age 30, unarmed, details withheld. Anthony Reeves, 27, unarmed, witnesses contradict police version, details withheld. Travis McCoy, unarmed, shot accidentally, details withheld. Ernest Williams, 27, unarmed, details withheld. Eddie Ramirez, age 16, unarmed, witnesses contradict police version, details withheld. <laughs> the facts about these killings might show that policemen acted in self-defense, legally and properly. Or the facts might show that policemen panicked, overreacted, or killed illegally. We don't know, and you don't know, and the people who run our Los Angeles Police Department do not believe you have a right to know. And that is what all these stories are about.
Just that. Just our effort to get information from a public institution. That's our job. That's you know, what we're talking a great deal, as you know, about unarmed civilians who've been killed by the LAPD and about the department's secrecy about those shootings. We need to talk, too, about the secret investigations themselves, about the system that's been set up between the LAPD and the district attorney to see if a killing by a police officer was legal and necessary. Here's a rather hard look at that system. Unlike an ordinary citizen, when an LAPD officer takes a life with his gun, he is not put in custody. He is assigned to a desk job while his killing is investigated by the department. The investigation is done by a special shooting team under Lieutenant Charles Higby. Higby's investigations have a reputation for being thorough. When he's through, the district attorney is supposed to double check his work to see if the officer's killing really was legal. But the DA waits a long time for Higby to get through. The department may not investigate an officer's killing as efficiently as it does a citizen's killing. In the case of one unarmed 19-year-old shot last year, for example, Higby's team did not turn his file over to the DA for nine months. When Ruben Cortez, an innocent hostage, was killed back on January 19, we asked the DA's investigator when he began his own separate inquiry. Can you predict when your office will begin its review and investigation of its own? Uh, I'm not sure. I was talking to Lieutenant Higby today, and mm -hmm. we're discussing that. And uh, no, I can't, I can't really say. Couldn't say two weeks uh, or a month? He's or got a... his hands on a lot of raw material, not gathered, not coalesced. Oh, it'll be sooner than a month, I'm sure of that. Um, Between two weeks and a month? Oh, I wouldn't think it would be any less than two weeks. Is there any danger? Uh, strike that, any more than two weeks, excuse me. Four months later, Campbell's team has still not examined any evidence or talked to a single witness. So he usually waits for Lieutenant Higby to complete lengthy investigations. Higby says he's only searching for the facts, though he sometimes appears to have conclusions the day after a shooting. Was Officer Hammond's shooting of Ramirez an act of self-defense? Yes, sir, it was. And the DA, who's intended to be a check on the department to make sure it hasn't whitewashed one of its homicides, appears to take its cues from the department. The department apparently decides just when and where the DA will double-check its work, as Chief Davis made clear in a videotape message to his men. I think men. everyone knows that and certainly you do, that every time there's a shooting that we go into an extremely uh, uh, labored uh, investigation of the whole process. If there's any potential uh, criminal conduct on the part of the policeman, we have it reviewed by the district attorney. If and when the district attorney does take a look at a homicide by a police officer, it does so with what it calls too small a staff, six investigators, all of whom are former law enforcement officers. Two are former LAPD officers. The DA's office says it is nonetheless an independent watchdog, but critics say the DA has much too cozy a relationship with the LAPD to be an effective watchdog. As you probably know, the DA and the police are colleagues in the prosecution of crimes. What we have actually is a conflict of interest between the DA and the police. The police and the DA work hand in hand in prosecuting crime. In the last 12 years, the DAs can only remember two cases in which LAPD officers were prosecuted for wrongful killings, and they can't remember any convictions. So no prosecution to conviction for an officer on a homicide case since you've been here? I do not recall one at this moment. The county coroner, Thomas Noguchi, has wondered if LAPD killings should not be investigated by an agency which is truly outside the police department. Of course, there might be a, a great deal of uh, protection for law enforcement agencies that uh, any evidence and a part of the investigation be conducted uh, by a third party always uh, gives uh, greater credibility to the community they serve. But for now, the investigation of police killings will remain up to the police department itself and the DA. And what they find out about those killings, they keep secret partly out of the concern that the victim's family may sue the city. But people on the city council are nonetheless beginning to question these secret investigations. You 
feel that uh, uh, an organization with this type of mandate can uh, conduct investigations in an unbiased and a fair manner? I think they can do a job for the department, for the city. Uh, I don't know. That's all I can say right now. It's one of the reasons, that's one of the things I'll be looking at as we get the answers. Mrs. Russell doesn't have answers yet, but the department is apparently working on the request for information that it was given by Mrs. Russell's police committee. But there's more to say about the investigations into shootings. You may be surprised to learn the role the police commission has in these investigations, and that's tomorrow night. Jerry, I think, you know, we should point out, in all these months of stories, we've not uncovered any information that really takes away the LAPD's reputation as one of the country's better police departments. But the stories have raised a lot of questions about the policies of those who are running the department. Policies like the one that keeps a killing by a police officer secretive. Policies are supposed to be made by something called the police commission. The commission says it is the head of the department. So we took a look at it, and I think you'll be interested. The police commission is nothing more or less than five citizens, political appointees, who give up one afternoon a week to sit in this room. Technically, they are the head of the police department, and Chief Ed Davis is merely the manager that they have employed. The commission says it makes policy for the department, and the chief simply implements that policy. But when Eyewitness News was wondering what the department's policy would be about sharing information with the public, we were told who the real policymaker was. Well, uh, I've always made these decisions in the past. Uh, I thought the commission, as head of the department, made the decision about no, policy. These decisions have, have not been made by the commission in the past. Now, you can seek the commission to make them. That's your privilege. Many people, even policemen, also think that the commission is a kind of citizen review board that looks over the department's shoulder. In actual fact, the commission could not conduct an independent review of a police incident if it wanted to. Well, the investigation is conducted by the department. The commission has no independent investigative uh, capability. What does the commission do? The answer is written in the agendas for their weekly meetings. They give out parade permits and revoke parade permits. They license massage parlors and revoke their licenses. Awards, honors, budgets, and the approval of requests from Ed Davis, their general manager. I'm sure a commission has a unique kind of a function, a very important kind of a function. I'd have to say that uh, I don't think it's well enough spelled out. I don't think we've spelled it out well enough. Some of the commission's sharpest critics come right from the ranks of the police department, which the commission says that it heads. I do believe that the police commission in Los Angeles is nothing more than a public relations group. They should work for William Morris or something. And uh, they have uh, no authority you cannot be ahead on a one-day-a-week basis. You cannot uh, deal with the day-to-day -day task. I think that the general manager really ends up being, the chief of police in this case, ends up being the head of the department. If the commission has surrendered control of the department to the chief, it's because it is part-time, because it has no investigators, and because it cannot speak for the department. The person who controls information basically controls an organization. And for the most part, uh, the chief of police does control uh, the majority of information about his organization. Now that tells us something about the police commission. It's the same commission that is working on our request for information about police shootings. The commissioners have been working on that for about three and a half months. Now they've begun working on a very similar request from City Councilwoman Pat Russell. We can talk about those requests and what's happening we to them. We talk a lot here about night. citizens being killed. Police officers get killed, too. According to the Bureau of Criminal Statistics, the number of LAPD officers killed over the last 10 years is 13. 13 is also the number of unarmed civilians killed by the LAPD during the last year. Getting information about those killings has been the purpose of our stories. It is the only purpose of our stories. And you'll have a good understanding of that effort to get information if you just watch this report. It started months ago. Reports kept reaching us about unarmed civilians being killed by the LAPD. 
We knew that policemen are authorized to use only the amount of force necessary, and we wondered why LAPD officers were finding that deadly force was necessary to deal with unarmed citizens. The department's press relations unit was accustomed to giving reporters a very brief press release about a shooting, or providing a spokesman to ad lib off that press release. But that was all. As to questions about why Officer X felt it necessary to kill a citizen, department spokesmen were sometimes uninformative. I can't comment there. Because you don't know or haven't formed an opinion? Because I won't comment. So we made a list of recent police killings of unarmed citizens and put them in a letter to the department. We asked what the department found out about the shootings, what it concluded about them, how many shootings there had been in the last two years. We hoped that we would get a reply to that letter after we mentioned it to the president of the police commission. I will read your letter and I will uh, try to uh, get as much information as I can and I'll talk to you about that after I've had an opportunity to review it. We've waited six months for a reply to our letter about police shootings. And we are still waiting. In the meantime, we have learned that other police departments feel a duty to account to the public when one of their officers kills a member of the public. This is the last homicide in which a police officer was involved. Two hours away in the state's second biggest city, Chief Collender says he's glad to sit down with reporters and open the files on an officer's shooting. Why do you have a policy like that? Well, because we believe that uh, in this kind of a situation, or in, for that matter, in uh, any kind of a situation that could be controversial concerning law enforcement, that we have uh, an obligation to make sure that the facts are presented to the public who, for whom we work. Chief Collender also had no trouble telling us the number of people whom officers had killed. Is that information which you, uh, which you readily have or, and keep track of or, or need to go searching for? No, that's, a, that's really available to us. And to the press as well? Yes. Other police departments release statistics on shootings by police officers. Why not this one? Well, the other departments can do as they wish. After waiting eight weeks for Chief Ed Davis to at least reply to our request for more information about police killings, we retyped the same letter and sent it to the people who hired Davis, the police commission. That was on February 3rd. In late April, Councilwoman Pat Russell became interested in the whole issue because of a questionable police killing in her district. Because of a questionable police killing in her district, she was fairly stunned to learn that the city's police department and commission had virtually ignored a request for basic information from a news organization. She resolved to send her own letter through the council's police committee. Yeah, I think that this is asking for information which is available and which they can make public. And I don't anticipate the barriers. But Chief Ed Davis was already on record, unofficially, in opposition to letting the public know more about shootings by his officers. The one thing I'm not going to do is, is violate the privacy of innocent police officers. Could it be said that it's an invasion of an officer's privacy to find out the facts of a shooting he was involved in? It doesn't seem so to me. If he's in, engaged in the performance of his duty, I don't know that he's entitled to any privacy. Mm -hmm. uh, it strikes me generally as a good idea to share with the public facts about everything that law enforcement is involved in. Well, I think as long as we have the form of government we have that's run by civilians, <clears throat> that uh, the information within the government should be public. In general, I don't see any reason why it should not be released. And I feel certain that uh, uh, all that can be released is going to be divulged to the committee. How's it been like your relation with the media? It's been very good. Uh, because we have this openness, we have an excellent rapport between the media and, this, and the city uh, and the police department. And that's it. Just requests for information, a request which the uh, police commission says it's now working on. If our effort to get that information has caused embarrassment to policemen who are risking their lives in our behalf, and it has caused embarrassment, no one regrets that more than we do. We are just acting on a duty to ask for information about incidents in which people die.
Jerry, let me say uh, a personal word if I could. I was riding with some officers in their black and white patrol car one night, a few nights back. These were sheriff's guys. And later on, an officer said, uh, I think I've been mistaken about you guys. You're not down on us cops at all. Of course we're not. We're just trying to get information about the police shootings of unarmed people. And if our intentions have been misunderstood by police officers and their wives and some of their supporters, I'm going to assume that that's my fault. But let me tell you what's new about the whole effort. We had a visit from a member of the county grand jury today. He is interested in our attempt to get information and in evidence we've uncovered about certain shootings in which witnesses contradicted the police version of what happened. Also today, the family of the victim of one of those police shootings, 16-year-old Eddie Ramirez, put the city of L.A. on notice that they intend to sue, and that suit will ask for $10 million in damages. Eyewitness News, meanwhile, has a request pending before the police commission as does uh, Councilwoman Pat Russell, asking for the number of shootings by the LAPD in the last two years, what the department found out about the shootings, what they concluded about them. The police commission has had our request since the beginning of February, and the president of the commission today told me what exactly is being done about both requests. I'd like to, to assure you that um, the one thing we're not doing is ignoring you or uh, uh, the request uh, that you made to the police department uh, or indeed the request that uh, Councilwoman Russell made of the police department for information. William said it's taking a long time because commissioners only work part-time and because the information has to be pulled from other files, not readily available. It's my personal view that um, all the information that government has about what it does ought to be released to the public unless there's good cause for not doing so. And uh, whenever information is withheld, people have a right to know what is that good cause. He says the commission is trying now to balance concerns over the privacy of the individual, the concern about lawsuits, balance that against the people's right to know. I know that you have been uh, very patient with us. Uh, I uh, understand that uh, it's been a long time, uh, but I would hope that you and uh, the community would bear with us until we have had an opportunity to thoroughly think this through and, and come to a conclusion, hopefully, that uh, will satisfy uh, those involved in government and those uh, involved in the community who really uh, do want to know uh, what we're doing. Well, that's the thinking over at the commission. We asked a representative of the police department itself to join us here tonight, but our invitation was again turned down. But Councilwoman Pat Russell, about whom you've heard so much in the last two minutes, is here. And this is not for you a brand new interest. Maybe you ought to say what your motivation was in, in beginning a request like that. Well, I think, first of all, as a citizen, when I read about any of the shootings, I'm concerned as to what will happen. And certainly, as a, an elected official and as a member of our police fire committee of the city council, I feel as though I ought to know what's going on and what is the policy, if any changes need to be made. Then, uh, a few weeks ago, when Anthony Reeves was shot uh, mm -hmm. in a police shooting in my district, the police called me, as they do when it happens in the district, and gave me the uh, facts. But I knew that I'd want a follow-up, and I'd want to get more information than I've been able to get before. And so I brought in my motion uh, in order to find out the follow-up on Anthony Reeves and then the other shootings. In the what kind months. of, uh, from your mail and, and telephone, what kind of feedback are you getting? It's interesting. It's very thoughtful. I think that my motion is thoughtful. I'm asking for information, information which people ought to have. And the feedback I get is, thank goodness you're doing that. We've been looking for this for some time. That's the uniform response? That's about 10 to 1. Uh, uh, the, uh, the opposition really doesn't even come from the city. The, the thoughtful comments I get by mail or phone or in person are, we've wondered about that and we're glad you're doing it. And your fellow councilmen and the mayor, how do, how do they seem to feel? The <clears throat> councilmen I've talked with uh, have supported it, and councilmen I think you'd be surprised at, too. Uh, and the mayor. I've had nobody in City Hall who has said anything in opposition. Are there those who wonder if you intend by this some slight against the police department? Oh, no, I don't think so. Certainly nobody in City Hall. And most, most of the people that I know understand that 
basically it's supportive of the department. What we want to do is to give the department a vehicle to explain its own investigative techniques and what it's doing. Mm -hmm. Yes, Wayne, I have the, the, this question. We had tried, you had tried uh, on several occasions to have members of the police department come here and sit with us and talk to us. Mm -hmm. You certainly tried to have uh, Chief Davis do the same thing, come forward, uh, state his case, uh, clearly argue it out with us, if you will. Uh, Ms. Russell, have you attempted to call or to get any response from the chief on this? Yes, Jerry. As a matter of fact, uh, I have on other shootings, I've asked informally, I've asked officers, and I never got a satisfactory response. But on this one, I talked with the chief at a, at a separate meeting shortly after I brought in the motion. And uh, I indicated to him I was <coughs> serious about it, and I didn't get a no from him. Uh, I did get the feeling that he would come through. I wonder, uh, as a responsible news operation, and uh, in all due respect to everything that Wayne has put into this investigation, I think we've never quite been stonewalled quite the way we have been in this story by the Los Angeles Police Department, as basic as our requests have been, I think. Could you make a prediction? You're a public person. How is this thing going to go? Are we, Are we going to get, get information? the information? <laughs> well, we're going to get the... I'm, I feel I have a responsibility, and I will get the information I asked for. It's scheduled now in a committee hearing, and this is a traditional thing to do, to ask for the information, to get a report, and for it to come back. I'm confident it will work that way. I may have to ask for more information than they give. I think then we'll have some discussion. You know, it's a, it's a difficult problem because the people have a right to know, and I'm determined we'll get the answers. We also have to protect the officers and the integrity of the police department. Uh, do you those, think it's threatened? Do you think it's threatened? in this situation where we want accountability, is, uh, is, is there any threat to the Los Angeles Police Department? Well, there's a thin line. When you have a shooting and an officer is implicated, then he may be taken to court. So then you're dealing with legal problems. And the attorneys have problems on this. I would not want to put an officer at a disadvantage in court when he, by putting out information that perhaps should be confidential. I think that's the kind of thing we have to look at very fairly. On the other hand, we don't get any information to speak of at all. We don't know any of the follow-up on, uh, on recent shootings, uh, whether, uh, whether the officers were implicated, whether there was <coughs> discipline, uh, whether there have been any changes in policy or training. And, like, those are the things people have a right to know. And that's what we're going to keep on trying to get.